Jason, or should I say King Sid, your time has come. All that bullshit. All that being fake behind closed doors, it's time to bring it to the light. Listen, people, if you have not peeped it already, and some of y'all did and some of y'all didn't, but I don't f*** with bro. I done let a lot of sh die down, but I did not let nothing slide, fam, because you really tried it, and you tried me. You tried my character. You tried my intelligence. You really size me, fam. Like I'm a goofy, like I'm some goofball, like I'm a lame-ass nigga. Before I even get started, let me just make one thing clear. That Steve the Steve's group, I'm not a part of that. Do not associate me with that shit. I'm not a part of that group. F that group. It's nothing for that group. That group was just a big ass scam for just to put money in this nigga pockets, bro. This nigga was using our faces to put money in his fucking pockets. But I'm going to get into that later on towards the video. But let me start off with you, Mr. King said. There's four reasons why I had to stop with bro matter of fact it's not even four reasons why it was the reasons that led up to me just not fucking with bro completely bro this all started when we all move into a crib together but it was this nigga idea in the first place he called my phone saying yo nate i'm getting a crib i want you to move in i want us to start a, a whole group channel called the steez you feel me the steez group whatever he called my phone, remind you, at the time I was living with my mom, you get what I'm saying, I was still living with my mom, I was like, I'm, I'm 23, still living with my mom, so I'm just like, you know what, let me take this opportunity to move out, it's my first time moving out, and, and I'm moving out with other people that I do the same shit with, and I'm moving with other people that I'm cool with, that I grew up with, technically, because me and him graduated together in high school, I met this nigga in high school, bro, so fast forward, I move in, I pay 15 to move in, right? This was the first issue I had with this nigga. When I first moved into the fucking house, that first, the first two weeks, or the first week or the second week, I was on the phone downstairs with a girl. It's 2 p.m., people. Everybody else is still asleep. It's 2 p.m., right? It's 2 p.m. I'm downstairs talking to a girl. Everybody's still asleep. Then this nigga Sid comes down. He sees me on the phone. He sees me on the phone. I see him see me on the phone. I'm talking to the girl still on the phone out of nowhere. Five minutes later, this nigga starts yelling at me, telling me to get off the phone. Oh, why the f*** are you on the phone? What if I came downstairs and started talking, this and that? Get the fuck off the phone. You always on the phone. You always on the phone with a different bitch every day. Get the f*** off the phone. What the f***? My nigga, I had to stop and think. And realize this nigga is telling me to get off the phone to a house I'm paying twelve hundred a month. Remind you, people, I paid fifteen to move in. Now after that fifteen, I have to pay twelve hundred a month. That twelve hundred only came with a bedroom and a shared bathroom with Jay Wonder. So you mean to tell me I paid all this money for you to tell me, oh, get off the phone, tell me what the f to do, what when to be on the phone, and you telling me to get off the phone like you my f daddy? I don't even know my. F your daddy bro and you telling me to get off the phone like you my daddy bro what the fuck is wrong with you that day literally after he said that started yelling at me stabbing on me to get off the phone bro i just walked out i ain't saying nothing to him the man continued rambling on then out of nowhere that's when jay wonder comes in talking about some oh just ignore him He's just mad, da 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 y'all boys should dead it, this and that. I told Wonder the same shit. I didn't move in. I didn't pay 1200 to get yelled at, beaten, told what to do. I could have stayed at my fucking mother house. I don't even know my fucking daddy, and this nigga trying to act like my fucking daddy, bro. What the fuck, bro? And then on top of that, not only is this nigga telling me to get off the phone, I have to go through the nigga to invite guests, bro. I have to go through the nigga to invite guests to a house I'm paying 1200 a month to, bro. 1200 a month, I have to go to a nigga and ask him, please, can I invite someone over? It came to a point I had to lie to say this is my family member just so the, so so just so just a person could come over, bro. Like, why the fuck I have to lie for someone to come over, bro? What the fuck, bro? But towards the end of that situation, he came to me, apologized. He said, my bad, my fault, this and that. He admitted that he had anger issues, that he needed help, whatever, woody woo. I forgave him, bro. Whatever, bro. I deaded it. I just told the nigga, don't ever do shit like that again, because you're not my father, fam. But whatever. He apologized for that situation. Boom. We moved on. Whatever. Cool. But then here comes a second reason, bro. This man, Sid, and Suave had a two-man. The man, Suave, brought a two-man. Two girls to the crib. So him and Sid 
could do whatever, whatever. You get what I'm saying? They had a two man. Prior to that two man, they had end up switching. And then towards during that situation, that's when Sid done cuffed the two man. Listen, I'm not gonna judge what a nigga do with a girl, but like I said again, it's just a two man. I don't that's not, but listen to the story though. I'm just letting y'all know this the two man. If y'all did not realize who the girl was, this is the girl that I'm talking about. The girl named Kenzie. She was originally a, just a two man that was originally supposed to be for Suave, but it ended up as Sid and they just magically got together. She started living with us out of nowhere the next week. You get what I'm saying? I had no issues with the girl, nothing like that, I had no problem. She was living with us, boom, this and that. But then, during the time she was living with us, that's when stuff was being found out about her. They were finding out she was doing like crazy drugs. She was recently with just with the rapper before she even met with Sid. And she basically, they're just basically saying she just ran through like a whole bunch of niggas done got with her, right? The man Sid pulls me aside about the girl and basically was telling me everything I just recently just told you about the drugs, about who she was just with, this and that, how she's a whole, all types of stuff. And he's asking me, what should he do? And I told him, I said, listen fam, you know who you are. You know what type of person you is. You know you should not be around these type of girls. The man told me himself that he was going to go inside and kick the girl out. I kid you not, 30 to 40 minutes later, the man just ends up cuddling with the girl. Like I said before, people, I don't care what a guy do with a girl, but hey, that's just your business. This was started becoming the issue, though. We had a magic show video, right? Before the magician started, the ma magician came to me and said, listen, before I get started, I want you to tell everybody that's behind me to move away from me when I'm doing the magic tricks. I don't want nobody behind me when I do the magic tricks. So I went to everybody that was behind him when he was doing the magic tricks. I said, yo, before we get started, he don't want you behind you. I went to every different person. Then I went to her. I went to her. I literally said the same thing when I told everybody. I said, yo, he don't want nobody behind him when he does the magic trick. This girl starts being like, oh my God, leave me alone. Why are you bothering me? Why are you coming to me and telling me I'm not going to listen to what you do? Like, starts being a spoiled brat out of nowhere, bro. Bro, start causing a whole scene. Then this nigga said, Mr. Captain save a want to save this girl. Like, oh, why are you bothering her? This and that. Leave her alone. This and that. Get away from her. You don't even like her. You don't listen to that. You said all types of things about her. I'm like, bro, what? Fam, you just met the bitch like two weeks ago. Now you all like, you feel me? You just came to me. Imagine you just came to me about the bitch, right? You told me about the bitch saying all this type of stuff about the bitch. You was about to kick the bitch outside your house. Now all of a sudden you defending the bitch. That was the issue I started to have with him. He's defending this girl after talking so much shit behind her back about towards me finding all this shit about this girl, right? How she's ran through, how she does serious drugs, how she been with this and that much people. Yet you're protecting this girl, right? After just knowing her for two weeks, bro. So when she starts causing the commotion to sit, the man said did all that, bro. I, bro, I kid you not. When he started snapping on me about that, I didn't even snap on him. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna go do this video. I walked up and got up. I went to my room, bro. Cause I'm like, bro, there's no way you're defending this after you just came to me about this. Right? Oh, uh, that's when Jeff and Suave came in my room and just like, Nate, just do the video, f all that bullshit, just knock out the video and this and that, feel me? So that's when I just went back downstairs and just continued to do the video. Bro, peep game in my face. I was so uncomfortable in the beginning of the video, bro. I was literally uncomfortable in the beginning of the video. That's how you know before the video, I was so uncomfortable. And peep game as well, notice how that's the last video of the channel, right? Literally. Not only I was uncomfortable with the video because what transpired before that, before the video even started. People, that's the last video, but I'm gonna get to that, right? So after when the video started, that's when the nigga Sid started talking like, oh, you doing all this and that, he ain't had to do that, this and that, this and that, you wanna be a crybaby, this and that. So I, I started snapping at the nigga. I said, listen, bro, you bringing this into this house that we paying bills for, you just met the bitch. you wanna be Captain Saber, you talk, you just, we just got done talking shit about the you just got done talking the shit about the bitch. Now you protecting the bitch. Now you want to be all, all like, oh, you want to be Captain Saber. Da, 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 da. Man, fuck you and fuck the bitch too. I literally said that to their face. We started arguing. We was not talking to each other for like a couple of days in the house. That's when one day when everybody was at a crib, they was drinking this and that, having like a little getty whatever downstairs. 
That's when everybody was just like, yo, y'all boys should make up, da, 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 this and that. That's when he came to my room, knocked on my door. That's when he just forced himself through my door because I always keep my door locked. He was just like, listen, Nate, I'm sorry. I apologize, this and that. Let's not fall, off, fall over about no bitch, about no hoe, this and that. But it's just like, bro, it took you now to realize that, bro? Like, after all the days that passed, and remind you, people, the days that are passing, he was still being petty. But the man, once again, he came to apologize. So he apologized for the situation that he tried to be my f***ing daddy. Now he apologized for the situation that he's trying to protect this girl. This is not saying his bros over right? So he apologized. Like I said, I ain't gonna hold a grudge, but I'm not gonna forget what the f*** just happened, right? That went by, right? The last two reasons basically sums up why I stopped with, bro the third reason why bro here's the third reason what happened that transpired prior to living with bro right so we had got a boat after a video they don't shot right after the video they said they were gonna have a boat okay everybody that was part of the crew was on the boat and we had brought girls i brought my own girl to the boat everyone else brought their own girls to the boat said brought the same girl that you know feel me that being captain sable to the same girl you feel me to the boat right fast forward Everybody vibing, chilling on the boat, whatever, this and that. The captain comes and get me and tells me, yo, your boy's tripping. At first, I don't even know what he's talking about, bro. The captain comes to me, the captain of the boat, say, yo, come get your boy, he's tripping. So I say, okay, uh, point me to where is that, okay, I'm walking over. The captain brings me to where the situation has happened, saying my boy's tripping. And he was talking, when I came to the situation, it was Sid, the girl, and the girl that I invited, they were all arguing. So I was trying to kind of confuse on what was going on. So I was trying to peep game was go what was going on. I was trying to peep game. Bro, the man said, prior to when I'm trying to listen to the argument and see like what the fuck is going on, the man said lunges his hand towards the girl neck that I invited. He lunges his hand towards the girl neck. Bro, I kid you not, I started spazzing, kid. Cause you're lunging your hand towards a girl that I invited. You putting your hands on a girl on top of that, fam? Hell no, nah, fam. I started snapping. I started. I was about. I ain't gonna lie. I was about to just. You feel me? Because I'm just like, no way. You just do that. Listen, people. I don't condone that bull. You feel me? You could be my dog. You could be my close friend. You could be my brother, fam. What you not finna do is put no hands on no female. I don't condone that bull. I ain't on that shit. Listen. I know whatever happened transpire in the past with Sid and Diamond, and I'm not trying to bring Diamond into this, but you feel me? At the time when that situation had happened, I wasn't even around that, and I asked, bro, I said, listen, did you do it, or yes or no? Bro told me no, so I'm just like, you know what, whatever, bro. I wasn't there when that happened, I don't see it, but for me to witness this shit right in front of me in my fucking face, fam, no, I was heated, fam. I was heated. Prior to me yelling at this nigga, this and that, bro, the man, all of a sudden, he was just passed out, drunk, started throwing up, this and that. But remind you, that don't give you an excuse to put your hands on a girl just because you drunk, whatever, this and that, bro. And the girl that uh, he, the girl that invited, she was so heated, bro. Like, she was just saying all types of crazy shit. She's going to call police or, you feel me, or bring someone to handle said this and that. And I'm just trying to calm her down. But prior to me trying to calm her down, uh, other niggas that was on Sid's side, you feel me? D Rod and Sid was like, bro, it's nothing. Let her vibe out, bro. Everybody's just drunk. No, nigga. This girl's sober, kid. You feel me? This girl is sober, bro. You feel me? So, whatever, the situation died down. The captain was just like, you know what? Just cool it, feel me? I don't want no problem. This is not police coming to the boat. Because already, we was already illegal anyway, because we had too much people on the boat. So, we can't even make it too hot, bro. You feel me? So, prior after the boat situation, right? You feel me? The house was quiet, bro. The house was quiet after the boat situation. It was two days the house was quiet. Remind you, I barely be at the crib anyway because I'm handling my other business besides YouTube. I got a photography business, so I'm barely at the crib. So after two days of barely at the crib, I came back to the crib. Then a nigga said came to my room after the boat situation. The man literally came to me and told me, listen, bro, the reason why I did what I did is because Oh, I felt like she was following from the last boat. I felt like she was following me. She was doing too much. Everywhere I go, she go, this and that. So if if that, if that situation were to happen, I wouldn't even mind spitting on the girl. Fam, let me just stop y'all right there. It's the fact that you knew what you did and you're saying that you would do it again due to the fact that you felt like this girl was following you, this and that, on type, all types of shit, right? Fam, that's how sick it is. 
Remind you, I told y'all this nigga was drunk, but the nigga knew what the f he did, fam. You know what I'm saying? So when he told me that, it's like, I could have got into an argument with him. I just started laughing. I'm just like, you're unbelievable, bro. No way you're fing telling me this. Like you were saying, like, I would have spit on the bitch, I would have slapped the bitch, I don't give a f type shit. You feel me? Un believable kid after that situation i just went ghost bro i'm basically living in a house just paying rent and avoiding these niggas at this point because just like bro i'm done with the bullshit fam number one you try to act like my daddy number two you trying to protect the that you just was talking shit about me with this and that now you being captain save a lot of talking shit towards me and now you want to protect the girl off of a tool man off of another nigga face she was about to have sex with our an, another one of our homeboys but y'all switch off a tool man you're protecting on top of that and third you're putting your hands on females that i know like what nigga like bro i'm just done with this shit, fam so you know what i'm just here just paying the bills living doing a I gotta do get this money because at the end of the day, bro, you not finna phase me about getting this money and this group shit, this shit out of control in the first place because it's, but like I said, I could get so deep into the group shit. right now. It's on right now, it's about you, bro. I'm gonna I'm say the group shit for another video, fam. I got, I'm gonna break that down perfectly. Right now, it's about you, bro. So, prior to when I'm not talking, this and that, I'm just vibing, like I'm barely, I'm in and out of the house. Barely even sleeping there, whatever, avoiding these niggas. Stop talking to these niggas because I just need to break from these niggas tight, right? Remind you, I'm still paying rent, bro. So that's when the month of May came in, bro. I'm talking about we're two weeks in. I already paid my 1200 bro. I paid my 1200 I'm barely there. You feel me? Most, all my stuff is there, but I'm paying. You feel me? Bro, the middle of the month, the man puts me in the group chat, right? The man puts me in the group chat and basically was like, by the, towards the end of this, the month that I just recently paid for, May, towards the end of this month, everybody have to move out. I just broke the lease. Everybody get out. Do what you got to do. Go find your own place to stay, this and that. I canceled the lease, fam. Fam, I just paid you f***ing rent, and now you're telling me you're canceling the lease, bro? What the f*** did you even came up with that idea, bro? What, at one point, you could have came to me as a man and told me, listen, bro, I'm about to cancel the lease because I felt like we this and that, like you just did this shit out of being petty, out of spite. Now not only you fucking with me, you fucking with my money, fam. That's what you really got me fucked up at, bro. I pay, I pay this man twelve hundred, bro. Twelve hundred, bro. Remind you, when I'm paying this man, I don't even know how much the bills are. I don't know how much. I don't see the no type of paperwork because everything's under this man name. I didn't even sign no fucking contract to even live with, bro. Bro just said, come move in. I paid the cheese. When money was due, paid. Simple. But it's the fact that you broke the lease. After I paid you two weeks later, you want to break the lease, bro. You talk about towards the end of the month, it's time to everybody get out, bro. That's what you really got me up at. So when he did that, I kind of told bro, I said, listen, bro, whatever you got going on, whatever type of beef you have towards me, this and that, whatever type of hate you have, keep that shit P. Let me know, bro. You got to let me know about this shit. And on top of that, you owe me money then. Because I'm not finna pay for a month, I have to move out. Imagine you pay rent, then you have to move out. Who in the fuck pays rent to move out? You size me, kid. So listen, bro. I told the man, you owe me money, fam. You owe me 1200 The man said, I lost money too, part of this. So, uh, you not getting your money back. What? I don't owe you shit, this and that. I said, you know what, bro? Bet, bro. I ain't really pressed about it. This and that. I said, you know what? It, but at the time when he, as soon as he told me that, I came to a realization. I was just like, bro, listen. You know what? It makes a lot of sense, bro. F this nigga, bro. At that point, I already automatically put in my head F this nigga. He done size me. He tried to treat me like a fucking daddy. The nigga put whole holes over bros of a two man off of a random bitch that was about to have sex with Suave. And on top of that, you put your hands on my homegirl, fam. That, I can't forgive you about that. From you thought I was gonna let that shit slide, bro. You put your hands on my home girl, bro. So I said, bet, bro. After that, bro, I was just like, you know what? Automatically, I just had started planning to just moving out, bro, to the other crib. This is where the man really got me more fucked up, right? Remind you, he put me in a group chat to move out. He puts me in a group chat to move out towards the end of the, the month, like 
Basically, by June 1st, we're supposed to be move out. Texas, three days later, said, listen, by May, like, 25th, like, early, he basically pushed the date earlier to move out. Y'all got to get y'all shit out. Not even towards the end of the, the month. It's like he shifted the date. Now, I have literally four days to fucking move out, bro. After he said that, bro, just, I got heated because why the fuck the date done changed from the end of the month to now earlier? Now, I have to speed up my process. I have to spend cheese. I got to find time to take all my shit. After I just paid rent, bro, money don't just come out my fucking ass. Money don't grow on trees. I'm not a rich nigga, but it's like money's not being played with and unnecessary, unnecessary money was being spent. Because literally when you have your mindset on what your bills are laid out, what you're about to pay and this and that, it's like on what you're about to invest. It's like, okay, I know what this month comes. But out of nowhere, all this random shit comes due to the fact this nigga want to be petty, fam. So, bro, I started snapping on, bro, through text. And then prior to when we were arguing, the nigga talking about something he made me, bro. So I'm like, bro, who the f you made? Now you got me really fucked up. So then to a point when we was arguing so much through text, the man dropped this addy. He was at my barber. I pulled up quick. I pulled up with my boy. I went over there. Long story short, we just ended up fighting, bro. Prior to when we were fighting, I basically got jumped because... I literally pinned this nigga down, and then this nigga Wonder came out of nowhere and started hitting me in the head, bro. Like, trying to knock me off this nigga. Bro, remind you, all I did was pin the nigga Sid down. This is a me and Sid argument. This nigga Wonder come out of nowhere talking about some Get off of Sid! Get off of Sid! Get off of Sid! After that situation happened, called my homeboy Jeff, who's part of the group as well. Basically, I called him, let him know what happened. Basically, Jeff was just like, bro, what the f***, bro? We all homeboys. Y'all should get y'all one-on-one. We shouldn't be jumping. We went to go get Jeff. We pulled up to the gas station because they were still there right next to the barbershop. We pulled up and Jeff hopped out the car and saying, yo, listen, I know we we arguing this and that, but we got some of this like, man, know that jumping shit. Everybody get their one-on-ones. To make a long story short, the nigga says spits on Jeff then took took off, bro. Right there. Right there. See how many see how many thinking phase look at this shit, bro. How about with our t shirt? <laughs> We're already. Oh, I try to go in this shit. Hey, what what the other camera at for uh what other camera at for right here? Run it back a little bit, run it back. You see what I'm talking about? You see how the camera right here? Like where what have you for this one at? You see me picture <laughs> I fit look he hiding, whoa, he hiding the whole time, see? He hiding in the car, whoa. Now look, 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 look. Look at this one, EJ, look. I'm gonna flinch at his eye. See? See, I flinch again. I'm trying to hit his ass. Uh, then he spit on me. You see that? You see what happened? You see how he ran out the car? Whoa, that thing of, hey, man, go with this camera, man. Go with this camera, man. We need to get this camera right <laughs> Oh. His girl came and got him? Yeah. Oh, his girl came and got him. The girl came and got him, they scared. They scared, oh my God, they scared. Yeah, that camera. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just watch, 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 watch. Nigga run, man. Whoa, this is the shade. Jit by the shade, I think I'm about there right now, ain't it? Oh yeah, they hear they hear people this shit. Yeah, watch this, watch this, watch this. Fuck nigga, spit on me. Look, he right there. He's standing on top of the car. Just standing on top of the car. Ah!
nigga, that dude, you a nigga. Hey, run that shit back, man. Run that shit back. This nigga, this nigga, man. This nigga pussy, man. What you running behind them people for, man? You see me coming running behind them people, man. What you eat for, man? Y'all boy ain't know what time it is. Look, look. Nigga, stand up on top of the car. Just showed y'all boys all flinching at his ass, ain't it? I'm flinching at his ass. Look. He talking big shit behind them boys. Look, who you think he is? Now he's still talking. Get on top of the car again. I'm right there. See, spin on me. I'm right there in the middle. You see me? Oh, eh, ooh, nigga, all the boy holding me back. Look, all the, look, look, I'm trying to, ooh. Look, you pussy. Look, they got, they got right back in the car. You ain't do shook. nothing, man. You shook, man. You shook, man. You know what time it is, Jit. You pussy, Jit. <laughs> pussy. <man. laughs> After that situation, bro, all I knew automatically in my head, I have to go get my shit, bro. Because you know when niggas are mad, they want to do petty shit towards the house. What a fucking convenience. I was so fucking right. Because when I went to the crib, already half of my stuff is outside, bro. Imagine you pay $1,200 and these niggas are moving your shit outside the, the house. Imagine you paying $1,200 and they got people that don't even live there moving my shit, fam. Because all y'all want to ride sit. On top of that, prior to when I was moving my stuff, the bitch Jade was throwing my stuff down the stairs and then I'm yelling at the girl saying, don't throw my stuff. And then she slaps me, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I blacked out. But I did not touch her, bro. But you know what, Jade? It's straight though, bro. It's straight. I get it, bro. All you do is cook and these niggas, bro. And you know what's crazy too about you? Well, I could get on you, but the crazy thing is about you is you're in a group that you already had sex with two niggas. And you're telling the, the internet that y'all brothers. You're, we're, you're, we're not your brothers. These niggas are not your brothers. You're having sex with them. And you're living with wonder. Be for real with yourself. I heard you have a nigga in jail. I hope he sees this. Be for real with yourself. That's my slap to you. Hm. That's tough. <laughs> I'm not laughing Listen bro After that situation I literally had to lie and basically say Oh I'm bringing police, I'm bringing my mom for To stop these niggas from throwing all my shit Because bro I have a lot of shit And I can't move all that shit One night, I have to buy a truck All this and I had to lie to these niggas so they won't Touch my shit, I had to say police about to come This and that bro But to make a long story short did, bro, Sid, you got too much pride, bro. I don't know what the f is wrong with you, fam, but you tried me, fam. You tried me. You f with my money. You f with my intelligence. And you the type of nigga that just can't take no, bro. Sometimes when I tell you no, you just act like a b How the f don't sit there and tell me about myself? But when I tell you about yourself, you get mad, fam. It's like you make it seem like I'm a f hater, fam. It's crazy how you make me seem like a f hater, but all my times, I've always been there to help you. Like that time with that diamond situation. Like I said, I ain't trying to bring that diamond situation. But let's talk about it real quick, fam. Fam, I, when you was making that truth video, when the whole world was against you, when all the world thought you did a domestic violence, you abused that girl, you choked that girl, I was behind that f***ing camera telling you what to f***ing say word for word, bar for bar, nigga. Whatever you f***ing said was my bars. Whatever you f***ing said, it was me. I was behind that f***ing camera. When you went to court, to fight the case with the girl. When you brought your lawyer, you called me to defend you. What the fuck I did? I got up and defend you, nigga. Like a real ass nigga, like I should. And you know what's crazy too? When when we went, when we all went to jail for that video that you did with the coke prank, right? It's your idea. We called the police like nine times before I called. You was begging me to call. Eventually I did it. I helped you. Helped you made a successful video because it had one million views. And all you did was bonded me out. But then you looked at me and said, oh, you got to get your own lawyer. You got to pay your own court fees after that. I had to do this probation shit for one year. I was restricted for so much shit, fam, because of you, bro. Now I'm off the probation shit, bro. Facts. I'm done. I'm off. And you're still on it. I had to thug it out. Bro, they even came to me to tell me to snitch on you, nigga. They came to me and tell me to snitch on you, nigga. And what the f*** I did, I told them, no. I'm going to ride this shit out for one f***ing year, bro. Because if I would have snitched on you, nigga, they would have came to you, locked you up, and basically you had to fight the case, bro. That's how it was going to go down, bro. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that, bro. 
It's crazy how I still remain solid after all the bullshit that you put me through, bro. That's crazy, bro. That's real fucking crazy, bro. Listen, people, once again, bro, don't associate me with that Steve shit. And don't associate me with that nigga Sid, bro. I'm done with that nigga, fam. I'm done. And that's crazy. I ain't even talk about the Steve's channel yet. I'm going to get to it, though. Trust me, I'm going to get to it. Trust me, bro. This is not over yet. Your time is coming. This is my most favorite part about this video, bro. Because after everything that went down, the girl and Sid ends up breaking up. And she gets on Instagram and exposes the man for what, ladies and gentlemen? Abusing and mistreating her. That is so crazy. The girl that you end up protecting ends up exposing you for mistreating her and abusing her. Go fucking figure. Wow.